go live. All right. Well, I think we are live now. So I'm going to go ahead and hit record in the actual Zoom. Good afternoon, fellow project managers. How are you doing today? I hope you're doing great. And I appreciate you joining me for this call. As you can see from the title of this call, it's a remembrance call for a couple of awesome people who are in the PMI community. Some of you may have known about them, others may not. But the two people, particularly Ginger, who was like a mentor to me and had done training and speaking to firms with me and was really more like a coach after a point, trying to propel me in the directions that she thought fit. So we lost Ginger in October last year. And a month before that, we lost another PMP guru, PMI affiliated giant in the industry. Some of you may know Chris, you may have seen his channel, but I only got to learn about that unfortunate event very recently. So I put this together to remember their awesome contributions to the world of project management, not only in the world of the PMP exam, but also in leadership and change management. Uh, Ginger was very big in change management and she had created a curriculum that we actually trained together. She was actually one of the first PGMPs and OPM threes in the world which is quite a significant accomplishment. So I put this together to remember the great works they've done and give back to anyone that had questions about the PMP exam, about anything PMI related. And this is really for them. It's really to continue and mark that legacy that they had left behind. So, we are going on a helping spree today to help anyone who is stuck, anyone who needs advice as far as the PMP exam is concerned, and anyone who may be struggling in their journey. So I can see we have here two awesome folks on the uh, meeting outside of YouTube. So um, if that's okay, I'm just gonna unmute and see who is here and have a little conversation um, about how to move you forward in the world of the PMI or for the um, PMP exam in particular. So who is on? Anyone on at the moment? Um, you might have to unmute yourself. Um, yeah, I just did. You've got Adam right, right L here. Adam, thank you for joining, Adam. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Um, you know, jumping on here because I'm a little bit, I guess, disheartened at my current progress, but uh, but I'm good otherwise. Good, good. So tell me, you said current progress. So some progress is better than no progress. So tell me, what, <laughs> what progress are you making so far? Well, I guess to fill, um, to fill anybody in on that's on the call, I've uh, taken the test twice now and failed twice, um, once back in May on the 20th and then once again on the 11th of June and had originally given myself about six months or so to study uh, before the first exam, then met, uh, I guess, sort, sort of met you or met your program or got introduced to your program and found my energy again, you know, found my motivation again and really jumped back into it and thought I was really ready to go that three weeks later and got the nice little um, schmack to the nose per se. <laughs> and then uh took me a little while to kind of reset. I went on a little uh, seven day rendezvous with the family, didn't look at mm -hmm. PMP at all. And, you know, I decided to get back into it after an email um, from you and from the uh, Lieutenant Colonel and stuff saying, Hey, get back on the horse. So, I've paid for my test again and paid, uh, schedule it for the 1st of August. Um, you know, so that gives me quite a bit of, or has given me quite a bit of time to study, but I feel like I'm just reviewing this. I already know we're reading the PEMBOK again and it's just, 
I don't know. It's like it's not sinking in because I've already seen it. I don't know if my so, brain's just so like it's, yeah, put it's, a barrier for what. Yeah, it's not sinking in. Are you feeling some confirmation though as you're reading it? Are you are you finding confirmation a hundred percent, or are you identifying some tiny pebbles and rocks that you may not have encountered before? Is it all all of this? I've cleaned the plate. Is that what it is? So, sort of like. I mean, for a prime example, I um, was going over the tacit knowledge stuff, right? So I'm going through integration again, and I just finished it up on Friday or Saturday morning, early Saturday morning. And as I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh, that's right. You know, explicit knowledge is easy to, to codify, but, you know, easily misunderstood or, or, you know, you can put your own spin on it or whatnot. And then, you know, but then I'll get to – other things and it's like when you read it you'll remember yes that's what that meant but then at the same time you think if i was in the exam i probably would have been struggling to remember what this definition was mm. or what what this concept was you you know what i'm hearing adam i'll just give you my two cents you know what i'm hearing is an opportunity for you to do two things two things I would do if I were you. <clears throat> so let me just get up my whiteboard here. Oh, someone's having a party there. <laughs> my kids. <Yeah. laughs> so what I would do, there are two big things. One, I would definitely do a whiteboard binging session. I, I just call it a whiteboard binging session because I would do a whiteboard binge on all the 49 processes um, a whiteboard binge is getting yourself a real whiteboard marker and reconstructing all that you feel you know and trying to plug in what you don't know on that whiteboard. And secondly, I would also do a teach my past self. My future. You know? Teach your past self and teach your future self Based on what you're reading, what you're studying in the Pembok Guide, you know, every sentence, every word, everything that jumps out at you, teach yourself, you know, teach yourself to save you didn't know anything. Teach your past self like when you didn't know and teach your future self feeling like you do already know. What would you teach your future self to impress or impress upon your future self? I mean, your future self already knows a lot more. So you got to get to par with that future self of yours. So that's the challenge, I would say, get the whiteboard. I know lots of people who have done this and found this to be very, very useful in their journey. And I wish I could um, bring up a few of those um, images, if I could. Let me see if I can find any of my images to show you what people have done. I think um, you're definitely right with the whiteboard thing. I saw that on one of your other videos. I think it might have been either the main line uh, or something else, which by the way, I didn't have the main line before I went in on the second one. And oh, oh my gosh, I love, I love that video. Oh. It opened up my mind like was like, whoa, okay. And it connected so many dots for me. Oh yeah, but, that, that is a must and then, for sure. Oh yeah, I agree. And then you had mentioned something about the, um, uh, the whiteboarding session. So I, I instruct. That's one of my jobs, right? So I went in on these giant whiteboards we have in the in the rooms, and mm. I locked the door and locked myself in there for several hours, and I drew out the main line oh, and good. several other videos that you've done. So I feel like that's there. Very good. That is def that is definitely one of the master keys. Definitely one of the master keys. Um, and I would also say, upon the main line, on top of the main line. You also want to do my other um, data flows of deliverables, um, yeah. verified deliverables, all that stuff on its own, and WPD, WPI, WPR on its own. Hey, who is the image that I was I did that one about. too. Yeah. And Those are I mean, awesome videos. Cool. Well, I, I know you already, let me see, let me just show you the screen. So I, I know you already know how to do this stuff, right? You already do the brain dump. But this is taking the brain dump and taking it to the next level. So going from just the, you know, the processes as they are here to taking out each one. So imagine I took out 
develop project to just on its own, you make that the center of everything mm -hmm. and map into it what is going in. So even if you know them like, you know, the back of your hand, Business still case, go right. through the motions yeah. of, you know, the business documents, um, the agreements, um, the EEFs and the OPAs, you know, and then the outputs. I would do this, you know, the project charter. Um, what else do you get from this? The assumption log, the assumption log, and then the things that are the tools and techniques. I would do whiteboard sessions to force myself to focus <clears throat> on each of these. And then I would mm -hmm. go a step further and try to recall. So for each of these like data analysis, I would force myself, okay, data analysis is here, but what am I analyzing? Is data analysis really there? You know, a lot of times we think we know what's there until we begin to probe deeper. So probing deeper mm -hmm. and realizing, you know, just for example, if I open up to, I believe it's on page, 70 something let's go there uh, okay 25 so if i go in there i realize oh my goodness i got it wrong data analysis isn't even here it's data gathering you see how it even gets the best of us i want to say okay data gathering i see what in data gathering and then focus on the bullet points here brainstorming focus groups. It, it's amazing how much you realize you do not know when you try to, you know, regurgitate it or you try to teach it back to yourself, you know, as evidenced hmm. by that, by that gaffe, you know, DA is not a tool and technique of DPC. You see what I'm saying? These are the things you're going right. to uncover. And then when you realize, oh my goodness, it wasn't even DA, it was data gathering, which pieces of data gathering? And then you're like, okay, I, I get that. I know, okay, I can see why this is the case. I know why it's not data analysis because there's really no data at this point. Data hasn't been generated from executing. So I can see why I'm not really doing that. You know, or you could say, oh, I see why I'm not really doing an analysis. I'm doing more of the initial stages. Now, when you get into planning, there's alternatives analysis in a number of processes. And under alternatives analysis, talks about analyzing alternatives for the knowledge areas. So you got to find out, okay, why, why are they using this here? Why are they using it there? You know, the more you do this for all the 49, I think something is really going to open up and stick for you. You know, you, you, you got to just teach it back to yourself. And if one tiny piece is missing, you got to go after that tiny piece and find out, okay, what exactly is this? You know, and I dare say there was a student who went through something similar and decided to um, have a channel just teaching project management based on the PMBOK guide, going through the process of learning for other people to watch and benefit from and see, oh, okay, I never saw it that way. You see, no matter how good anyone is, there's always that piece that someone could deliver that you the great trainer or coach was not able to give the audience in that spin or that flavor, you see. So that's why I love it when my mm -hmm. PMP gurus come on the call with me because they're able to explain things in a way that I may not have. They're able to shine some light on, on things that I, I may not have. You know, just like the, the great people we're remembering today, they would craft things in ways that other people may not. And that is where you have this gold nugget as well to, as it were, as you're going through the process, I challenge you, maybe create some training program where other people are coming along for the ride, watching what you're doing. And you can keep it private if you don't want other people to see, but just going through the motions helps. I remember going through my PMP exam stuff, I would record myself and people would think, are you crazy? You're trying to record yourself to teach yourself? I'm like, no. This is a proof that I truly know what I'm studying. And I recorded myself reading out the PMBOK guide, teaching the PMBOK guide. Yeah, it wasn't like fantastic, but it at least got me to a point where I'm like, oh dear, I definitely don't know that too well. You know, because the moment you begin to stutter and stammer and you, I mean, you can't even explain the stuff, 
it's a red light. And, th and that has happened to me on more than one occasion. There was another occasion, you know, I usually give family members the task of, of testing me. So there's another occasion I was being tested about the estimating approaches. And I thought I knew them so well. I've been training this stuff. And we got to a point where I realized, oh my goodness, I, I don't know the analogous bottom-up parametric three-point and where they're used and where they're not. So it was on, on the fifth edition, as I was getting ready for a CAPM exam, that I realized, okay, these are used here, these are used here, they're not used there. Little things like that. You, you'll be amazed at what engaging other people in the journey with you can do. So family members, you know, kids, they can be very helpful in testing you. And you can make it fun, if you get what I mean. Yeah, yeah, I understand what you're saying. I, um, I haven't gone that far to get my kids involved. My wife's quizzed me on, you know, flashcards and stuff because I was concerned during the exam, you know, obviously having seen it, that you would get to these questions where, and you've explained this before, where they will describe a process and then ask you what to do next. So not mm -hmm. only do you have to remember what the process is that you're, that they're describing, but then what comes right after that in the chart, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, it, not that it, it wavers you, but after so many of those questions, you, you start to doubt yourself. So, I mean, yeah, that's one thing. I mean, I can go back through my flashcards and, you know, would describe this process or whatnot 49 different times or, you know, describe these, uh, all the ITTOs or whatnot. Um, I, I do agree that is probably a good idea to do the uh, verbally, right? So mm -hmm. not only do you know it in, in your brain, if you were to receive the data how you wanted to, but what if somebody else presents it to you a different way? Um, or does they ask the question exactly how you expect to see it, I guess? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so I, 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 I could try that. Yeah. I, I would advise, you know, You'll be amazed at what you can learn from even, you know, the, the, the folks who don't even know the PEMBOK guide. You know, one of my students out of Canada, he was studying for the exam and he got his kids involved and they ended up knowing the ITTOs better than him. And they, they gave him a hard mm -hmm. time because he would, they would quiz him and he would get it wrong and they would say, Dad, we, we, we actually know more than you. That ITTO is this. And he'll be like, my goodness, my kids know this more than I do. You know, they're little sponges. And at the end of the day, he ended up using them as a key part to pass his exam, you know. So bring yeah. them along for the journey. They're stakeholders. And um, do the whiteboard <laughs> thing. Buy the whiteboard. Put the whiteboard in a strategic place and just whiteboard this stuff out. Because the more you visualize and the more you teach yourself, you're really solidifying the fact that you know this stuff. By the time you feel comfortable to teach it, it means that you know it. And it's evidenced in a lot of people in our group, Adam. A lot of those folks in the group, the moment they get certified, they begin training and coaching and helping other people. One of my students said, hey, Phil, can you, can you please um, advise if I can write a letter of you know, reference for these folks who coached me to you know, pass the exam? And they are in the group. They spend hours with her. And it just shows me that people want to give back. You know, but it also shows me that once they get certified, they don't need to go for any training or coaching because they already know the stuff and they're able to teach it. So it's a good measure of understanding when you can teach it back to yourself. And you, you, you know, you, you are in command of a subject, right? So if you mm -hmm. try to teach yourself and you flunk, you will know that you're flunking, right? So yeah, I would that's say good point. For, yeah, for all of the processes, Adam, I would do that. And, you know, not just all of the processes, I would do that. I would go on a binge training session of myself and I, I would go to page 686 and just start there yeah. trying to teach yourself. I mean, verbally, verbally. Let's, let's go to page 686. So benchmarking, brainstorming, check sheets. These things, I know it, it's, they all sound familiar, but you got to separate fact from fiction. What's the difference between a check sheet and a checklist? So if you find, oh, I don't know that, then go find out what the difference is. See, the check sheet is a data collection tool, not just a reminder. It's a check sheet to collect data. That's why they call it a tally sheet. You're keeping tally. A checklist is more like a reminder, but a check sheet is storing data. So little things like that are scattered all across 
the PMBOK guide, things people think they know, but in actuality, they don't. And the only way they would find out if, if they didn't really know it is if they tried to define it or even just try to write down a one sentence definition. If you're like, my goodness, I can't, <laughs> then it's time, you know, yeah. to go back to, to the book and because we just need to unravel everything. That's one. The second thing or the third thing that, you know, so I said whiteboard, I said, teach yourself. The third big thing really is to, um, go above and beyond the regular, oh, I'm going to sleep at 12 the night before. No, sleep early. Try to begin to load up your sleep banks, your, your rest banks. Because, um, I, I mean, I've said this a million and one times. Talk about the student out of Minnesota um, who had studied, done everything that he could, went into the exam, and on a Tuesday got a number of below targets and needs improvements and uh, maybe one target, if that, on a Tuesday. And I said, look, there's no reason why this should have happened. I think you didn't get enough rest. He said, yeah, I think so. And, you know, bright guy like you, in, intelligent, have, you know, holding down the fort at a good job. So I said, there's no reason why this should have happened. I know you know the content as evidenced by what I've observed in the tests. I, I think you need to do better with sleep. So... He said, Phil, I've decided to take it on a Saturday. And I, I could hardly believe it. I said, I support you, whatever you want to do. I know, but don't stress yourself before. You know, you've got a shorter takeoff time now. Don't stress yourself. He said he wouldn't. I got a phone call on Saturday. Five above targets, Adam. Five. Yeah. This is someone who got BT, BT, NI, NIT. Five ATs. I almost went berserk in celebrating his success because it just yeah. evidenced to me a lot of folks are not getting enough rest. They go in and they have a computer crash. Their memory just will not function. And the PMP exam is such that your memory does need to function in a particular way. You know, it does need to be on its A game. It's happened to me as well. You see, some questions that I tack question writers write and even some I write, mm -hmm. some days, I get them wrong. A question I wrote, I get them wrong. <laughs> and I know it. Oh, Phil, you're not thinking the way you should be. You're probably tired, you know. Or at the same time, sometimes when I rush through a question, I could feel I know where it's going. And boom, it just gets me caught in a trap. And I wrote it. I wrote it. So it just goes to show you yeah. lack of rest you know, and not, not taking enough time as one goes through and not being relaxed, those things could, they could be huge, you know, and there are many, many other cases I could point you to of reasons for failure. You know, another student of mine, same thing. This was back in 2010, you know, nine years ago. She's now PMP, an ACP, a CSM. She's forgotten about this. But when she took the exam, I knew she was not getting enough rest. So when she came back and said she had an accident on the exam, I said, I am definitely sure that this is because you didn't get enough rest. She didn't get enough rest and went in to face the beast. You don't do that because when you're going to face an exam like the PMP exam without rest, it could be really bad. So that is the third thing. And, and final thing, Adam, that I would suggest. I want to show you one more radical picture here from um, one of my students out of Virginia, um, former military as well, by the way. But he did something pretty radical yeah. as he got ready for his PMP exam. I find this to be very, very, very humorous. Um, you know, I often talk about eating the Pembok for lunch. Well, this mm -hmm. guy, he took over his dining table at home. Oh, not that. Took over his dining table at home. See the picture on the screen? <laughs> oh, my this God. Is a paper. This is his dining table. <laughs> if you zoom wow. in to the picture here, you can see he went crazy on the PMBOK guide. This is, these are excerpts of the PMBOK guide. These are processes, and these spaghetti lines are lines leading to the different, you know, processes showing the inputs going in, the outputs. He just went berserk on this thing. So my advice is, you know, maybe have a, 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 an area space dedicated to, you know, PMP brain power, do something like this, something that you haven't done before, stretch yourself 
and look for all of those relationships that you may not have um, looked at in the past. I think that's another good thing uh, to do to, to help you, you know, propel you okay. uh, forward. Yeah. Eat the Pembok for lunch, literally. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I guess, I don't know if there's anybody else that's on, but um, I was concerned yeah. about maybe move, moving the date. Very good, very good point. Kind of course for you, with you. Very good point. I thought of that as well. And, you know, I, I typically let my students decide what um, to do. Um, but just thinking through it, I'm, I'm like, Adam has to make up his mind what to do. I'm not, I, I don't want to be the person to say, oh, move it or don't move it. Because I've seen, you know, like this student who on a Tuesday didn't succeed. And then on a Saturday, killed it beyond belief. So he knew that he needed to take it at that point. I was a little bit reserved, you know, but I didn't want to push my viewpoint. And I'm glad I didn't because he knew for himself, he said, Phil, I've seen it. I know what to do. Yeah, it bit me, but I know what to do now. And I, you know, I didn't get enough rest. So yeah, him. And honestly, you know, there's another story. That same company that I trained, there was a, a colleague of his, had a similar experience, you know, studying and studied and studied and studied. And I'm like, I know you studied and studied and studied, but trust me, there's more to find out. She went into the exam, and this is a cool thing. It was just before the Pembok guy became the sixth. So she went into the exam on her second try and did everything that she hadn't done, listened, went in there, uh, and I was just waiting like a nervous p parent and got the phone call, got the text. It, it will happen, Adam. Trust me. We just need to do what we need to do, cover our bases, relax. You know, when your brain, when, you're, when you are sharp, you know, as a knife, you can do wonders. When you're not going in there with a, a dull mind, bad things happen. I, I know this. Even for me as a trainer, training this stuff some days i'm like phil what on earth what what are you doing and i know it's because i i haven't gotten enough rest you know but when i have gotten mm -hmm. enough rest and my mind can really think well i'm able to train a lot better and people get it you know like some sessions earn value takes up to two or three hours and i know it's as a result of both the students dullness of mind and maybe my dullness of mind but when we're all sharp and on the same plane, sometimes it could take one and a half hours, half the time, you know. And I know when I am the fact, I'm like, no, I, did, I botched that. That was, a, that was a not good enough. And people are like, oh, that was great. No, but to me, I know it wasn't good. So it's all about the mind being sharp. I just say, get enough rest. Load up your rest banks. Not the night before, but leading up to it. And studying late to me it's a no-no i know a lot of people do it and they say fail it works for me i know myself i honestly i don't advise it i don't i think you can get much better results with a sharp mind than studying all the way to the exam you know some people wake up the day of and they're going to put in another five hours i i don't advise that seriously so you know those are my three points adam yeah. i know you can do it um, if you, if you moved it, you would be able to join this. Um, we got a boot camp starting on uh, Saturday, July 20th to August uh, 17th. S anyone who wants to get this done, I would recommend it. But again, you gotta, you gotta decide for yourself, but if nothing else, the whiteboard in, send me the videos. I want to watch the videos, <laughs> you know, teach, send me okay. the videos. I'll watch them, you know, and, um, okay. I actually did think when I got your email earlier, I thought of doing an, an 18 hour boot camp, but honestly, I just got no bandwidth. I'm maxed out. My voice is still in recovery yeah. mode from my five week crazy trip around the world. I'm just trying to recover. So I, I know right. that if I do an 18 hour, no, this is just gonna be bad. Cause I've got travel again next week and I've got the course on Saturdays that is still gonna be going on. So I'm kind of stretched thin, but I'm glad you jumped on. Because honestly, I wasn't yeah. really, um, I didn't know that I was going to do this, but I, I go by how I'm inspired, you know, and these precious people just came to my mind. I'm like, you know, they would have, they would have done this. They would have been there, 
you know, Chris was always there for his students, jumping on calls and, you know, giving a lot of inspiration and motivation. And I thought, you know, let me, let me go ahead and do this and, and remember these awesome folks. So I'm glad we could actually talk and uh, iron things out and, uh, yeah, just mull over it, you know, uh, kick the ideas about and, and let me know what you decide, you know? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think I'll do that. I think I'll move it and um, I'll jump on that boot camp. And I appreciate you jumping on like this. It does help because uh, I really was starting to hit the, um, I guess not the bottom per se, but, you know, you just get to a point where you studied so much. I know. And you're like, what else can I study? You know, like this uh -huh. is just getting to the point where it, is this really going to happen or not? And uh -huh. um, it feels like everybody else, you know, you hear all these success stories. And although you're happy for them, at the same point, it almost feels like everybody else is leaving you in the dust. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just like any kind of race, you and it's not a race. It's not. But at some point yeah. you feel like there's no way I'm going to catch up. And you just you, you succumb and you just give up. But, oh, you, you will catch up and you have your own special lane. Trust me, they are that special set of people that need to hear from you how you did it, what you went through and how they can apply this to their own world, their own sphere of influence, just like you'll be doing, you know. So right. don't give up, man. Don't give up. Just, you know, you've done crazier feats, you know. <laughs> you've done crazier things. Seriously, you know, you've done that's, crazier that's things. And um, thanks for your service. Seriously. You know, we can actually just make a coalition and every week send me an update. I'll be happy to jump in and give you any directions and, you know, and, and Lieutenant Colonel is there as well. You know, we, we should just maybe hit him up with an email, copy me on it, copy Pat as well. Yeah. And um, yeah, let's, let's do it as a team. And I'll, I'll just jump in with a few comments here and there. Um, but let me know what you decide to do, whether to um, push it out, whether to go for the, the date um, and anything else. And if the, you're stuck on any, particular terminology, send them to me or just put them in the group. You know, everyone in the okay. group that's a PMP, I'm telling you, they're, they're willing to jump in and give their two cents with all pleasure, you know, so. Absolutely. Okay. Well, uh, I'll email you separately with it, but I think I figured out what I'm going to do. So awesome. Awesome. Let me know. And uh, we'll take it from there. And you, you know, you can still stay on the call if you, you got time. I'm going to see what our friends on YouTube um, have to ask if they've typed in any questions because we're doing this, you know, both on YouTube and Zoom. And I think I saw a few chats come in. Ah, our friends. So we, we got two friends here. We got Vikas. Um, Vikas says, I want access to, for your videos, to your videos, uh, knowledge area wise. So Vikas, if you go to praiseion.com, there's a lot of content on there. But the one that I would advise for you to um, register for is the uh, 25 Contact Our course. There's a lot of information out here. There's a lot of content, but you got to choose one that works, you know, for everyone, because I, I really don't know what everyone has done. So Vikas, I would go to this site and I would, I would register for the PMP Exam Prep Camp 2018. That's what I would do. Um, something else I would recommend is since you're, you're getting ready for the exam, just go to YouTube. When you get a moment, just go to YouTube and just type in, just type in Chris Daniel PMP. I want you to go to his site and go to his page and, and see the great stuff that he had done and the legacy he had left behind. Okay, just go there. Check out his videos, very inspirational, very inspiring. And I'm sure you'll, you'll learn some great stuff from what Chris has left uh, for us who are still trying to get PMP certified. There's a lot of great stuff there. Or click on videos. I think there's more videos here that you can actually find, okay? Um, for those of you who are PGMP, um, Ginger, you might be fortunate to find some videos. There she is. So those are some videos of Ginger um, talking about the PGMP. She was very passionate about the PMI. She actually had 
some ideas of what I should do. <laughs> I remember going on um, a trip uh, to Florida where we taught together and she was good. She pretty much gave me the out the roadmap for the rest of my career. She said, Phil, this is where you need to be. This is what you need to do. You know, lovely, lovely person. And I miss her so dearly. But anyway, you can uh, check out the videos of Ginger um, on that on that page, those pages there. Um, like I said, she was very, very much into the world of the PGMP, OPM3, very passionate about that as well, and um, change management. She was big on change. Oh, and benefits management. See, the topics that I get excited about these days, Ginger started that um, in me. All right, let's see any other chats we've got here. I think I saw Carlos. Carlos, how you doing? Thank you for joining. Carlos says I'm on the drive home. It's awesome to see you, Carlos. Um, ah, um, so Adam, Carlos is saying, can I put him in contact with you? Maybe you can help each other. So um, what is Carlos's email? I need, I'll find it. Carlos, if you, if you can put your email there, do okay. it. I will love to um, share that with Adam. Type your email, Carlos, if you can. Carlos says, hey, Adam, let me know. Let me, let me put this in our chat, Adam, so you can actually see what other folks are saying. For those of you on YouTube, you can actually join us. We are having a live conference outside of YouTube. The information is there in the comments, not the comments, the description of this meeting, all right? So you're, you're free to join us. Don't stay on YouTube. Come over, come over to us here. <laughs> come over to us here in Zoom. That's where you need to be. You need to be in Zoom. Okay, let me, um, let me type this into the uh, chat. There we go. Oops, there we go. Let me try again. Oh, I think I typed in too much text, too much text. There we go, okay. And then for those of you who are international, you've got find my local number Click on find my local number. Come join us. Adam and I are here. Okay. Uh, Vika says, one question, Phil. Do we need to read the Agile book also? I've been telling my students to read the Agile book because Agile has permeated the exam to some degree. Um, I remember back in 2018 hearing from students, oh, I'm shocked. There were at least 10 Agile questions. And then I'm hearing again, oh, there were no Agile questions. Then I hear again, there were Agile questions. So you cannot put it past the PMI. I mean, they've warned you. They've told you. you got to read the book, Vikas. you got to read it. Read the Agile book. I would highly recommend the sections of the book where they talk about predictive, iterative, incremental, and Agile in the Agile practice guide. Read that. It's going to help you. And then all the different fl flavors of Kanban, you know, flavors of Agile, Kanban, um, Scrum, um, TDD, um, RAD, JAD, all those, you know, associated pieces. Um, I would recommend reading those as well. Oh, thank you, Carlos. So Carlos has typed in his email here. And Adam, I'm going to share that with you in the chat. All right. So Carlos is a good guy. He's been trying to get this beast off his back. I remember Carlos, actually, I realized Carlos join in at that time i used to put together some uh Pembok jazz um programs so i would play a little bit of jazz on my piano and um, i think that's when i realized carlos was on the journey yeah carlos on the journey so um fabian great to see you fabian how are you doing and how are you are uh, recovering i hope you're doing good fabian says have you seen a project where a pmo Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. There are projects where, so when we say a PMO stepped in, the PMO appoints a project manager 
to take over from maybe the business side of the houses, project manager, or from maybe a functional person who was managing the project and not doing it too well. I've seen it so many times. Um, and I've seen the PMO remove a project manager and bring in another one also from the PMO. So yeah, I've seen that happen. But when we talk about the PMO stepping in, you got to remember, it's not the whole host of everyone on the PMO coming in to lead the project. It's the PMO saying, what is the current situation? What is the line of best fit to get to the end? And them appointing a PM from the PMO to take on that project, maybe to relieve a business leader of the project. Maybe the business leaders are not doing that well, you know, that good a job on, on the project. Because a lot of companies, they're so matrixed that the business people are actually the project managers. And the PMO, the loan PMO, they may be called upon by the senior management to take it over. In some companies, the PMO is already in charge of a number of projects, and they may just be called upon to take that additional one on instead of the business uh, leading the project. So yeah, that has happened for sure. Um, I see a chat from Layla Gaga. Hello, Layla, how you doing? Layla says, hi there, I'm Layla from Cameroon in Africa. Cameroon, yeah, lovely. Thank you so much for your videos. Uh, preparing for the PMP exam before December. Be nervous, but try to prepare with method. Absolutely. So you know what causes nervousness? Sometimes it's nothing. It's false evidence appearing real. It's that voice in your head telling you you can't do it. Oh, oh, the exam is so hard. Don't go by that voice in your head. And one of the ways to counteract that voice is to just tell yourself, I can do it. Phil told me I can do it. I'm telling you, you can do it. Trust me. If I could do it 14 years ago with my limited understanding and knowledge of project management, you can do it. Hey, this book right here, this book, it's not the be all end all, but it's a really great way of you beefing up your knowledge to a level that will enable you take on the exam. And I'm not saying it's the only book. I mean, so Adam, have you, have you read this one? Do you have this one as well? The Project Management Essentials or the electronic version of it? You know uh, yeah, I think you sent it to me. Yeah, this is another good one. So um, another of our military friends, I talk, say that again. I was trying to get back to the screen to make sure it was the same book, but I saw you oh, raise yeah. it up a second yeah. ago. The, if, if it's the, the one, yellow cover, yeah. Man and admin, yeah, it's probably this one. So um, one of our military friends went to South Korea, final assignment, um, Colonel, U.S. Marine, came back without any additional uh, preparation because he had already taken our course, read the book on his assignment, came back, boom, got his certification as a PMP. So this book, this and this, this is the dynamic duo. This will fill in the gaps that this one has. This one has any holes, this one fills it in. This one doesn't go into the minutia of the ITTOs, but this goes into a lot of the formulas and a lot of the principles thoroughly explained in this, you know, the PMBOK guide itself. So, you know, Layla, my advice to you is close the gaps in your knowledge. Strive to find the gaps and close the gaps. This isn't one of the regular calls where I talk about my content because it's not necessarily about that. It's about helping people. So whatever you know you need to do to help yourself, I would say do it. Um, I would say also test whatever is being said many times to make sure that is the best way to go. Okay? But you can absolutely do it. You can absolutely do it. Thank you, Carlos. Awesome to see you as well. Uh, Vika says, which book do you recommend as a reference book for PMP? I'm facing a lot. <laughs> Vika, I remember seeing a comment. I, I don't know if that was from you, um, but I saw something to that effect. My advice is very similar to what I told Adam. You've got to make it fun. You've got to make it fun. You've got to be creative. You know, you, you've got to make a story out of it. Make the story come alive in your head. Someone says, how? Who are the actors? The people in your life right now in your job. 
I can make up a million and one stories, which I have <laughs> because I've actually written books on this stuff, um, fiction books on leadership and project management. But I wrote a fiction book on project management. Um, I wish I could have even played one or two of the videos for you just uh, for you to see what I'm talking about. But um, I make it interesting um, by creating these stories about project management, the PMBOK guide. And if I'm reading a process, I make a story about that process. See, I make a story about the process. Um, let me see if I've got any of those here to share with you. I might have one or two chapters just for giggles. Um, okay, I might be able to get this is this is quite a unique uh, session because at the same time I also remember my friend uh, and my lead actress in this uh, uh, project management movie um, that I made. She's transitioned. You'll see her here. Um, so it's, I guess it's a day to remember all the great folks who've done good things in project management. But I'm going to share with you. Let me see if I can actually share this. I'm not sure if I'll be able to share the audio. Can I share the audio? I may not be able to share the audio. I'm sorry. Um, you know what? Let me let me try this. Adam, can you just? Oh, I see Fabian is here. Let me unmute Fabian before I do this. Uh, Fabian, are you there? I am. Hey, Fabian, how are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? I'm good. Good to hear your voice and. Good. It's a That's nice surprise. How, how, how's your um, recovery coming along? It is coming. Um, so still kind of going to physical therapy, but, uh, you know, that, that is ending soon. So I'm ready to get back to it. Awesome. Awesome. So good to hear your voice. And um, I know when injuries happen, it's very hard to think of anything else other than getting better, you know, so I can understand that. But uh, have you uh, taken like some time off work or are you back to the grind at work oh definitely back at the grind oh my so, gosh but oh. um but ready to attack this uh before the uh the new edition comes about so awesome that's that's great and um let's see the last time i remember getting an email from you asking for um one of the courses you were on. Do you know, I can't remember the date. Do you remember the date mm -hmm. of that course you were on? If you could shoot it to me, that would be very helpful. You might okay. be able to tell from the email string, but for me, I've got thousands of emails sure. that it's hard for me to sift a specific date you were on because you've been on a few of these courses. I can't remember which one it was. Okay. So if you can find the date, um, I'll dig into the archives and I'll pull out pull out those videos. Okay, no make worries. Sure you're able to, yeah, yeah. Make sure you're able to get them. But in the meantime, are, are you keeping? You've got the audio digest for sure. Are you? I do. And the that? outputs. Good. That was very helpful. And your PMP Good. bosses. I mean, it's uh, very inspiring. <laughs> so. Awesome. Awesome. I mean, a lot of those folks, they can give you a whole lot of inspiration. You know, there's so many great people on that group. I would say tap into them Absolutely. for sure. Yeah. And don't forget, check out Chris's um, videos that I, I typed in um, earlier. He's got some inspirational videos that you might want to watch. And Did I also just that? wanted to ask a quick question in terms of going about studying the LMS program, what type of sequential order, if any, um, or, you know, level of difficulty in terms of as it graduates in the LMS series. Gotcha, gotcha. So um, let me go here to, to help um, explain this to Fabian, um, and then I'll come back to the question about nervousness on the exam. And oh, Vikas's question about making it um, interesting. But um, going back here, Fabian, I, um, so can you see the screen? I can. Awesome. So right here on the screen, I have the LMS. So the, this one, the PMP exam prep camp, I would go through it with a fine tooth comb piece by piece. Um, the chapters that I really want to call out 
that I find a lot of people may not know are the dangerous ones. Integration is roughly 25% right now of the PMP exam. A lot of people don't realize that. But if you do the maths, you realize, I've got videos where I show how integration is 25%. Mm -hmm. Scope is huge because of what it affects. Schedule is huge. And then risk, th those four, no, and cost, of course. Those five, they they're beasts. And you just need to tame them. Deliberate, repetitive, intentional studying. You gotta have to chew the cud a number of times. Go back, eat it again, you know, regurgitate, you know, do it again, do it again, do it again. But integration is definitely one of the biggest killers of the PMP exam dream. Definitely. It's a horrible one. It's big. There's seven processes in it. The seven processes in it with everything from chapter one. A lot of people don't understand that a lot of chapter one, two, and three are wrapped up in integration. You see, mm -hmm. integration covers everything, it covers the base understanding of the terminology. If you don't understand terminology, you won't really see how everything integrates. And then it also covers WPD, the source of it. It covers WPI's use coming back into integration and it covers WPR's generation. That on its own is, is huge. And then it also covers change management itself and change management cuts across all of the processes. So to answer your question, Fabian, I would take them on one at a time first. And then I would, if I were you, go to page 500, I believe it's 560. Let me see, 560 something. Let me get it. 561 in the PMBOK guide, 561 all the way to all the way to 635 561 to 635 okay yeah i would cover that process group and guess what i would do fabian as i'm going through by process group when it comes to each process i'll go back to the videos that's what i would advise go back to the videos Zero in to develop project charter, hit develop project charter, digest that, cross-reference. I would do that for all the processes. It shouldn't take more than eight hours. It shouldn't. Okay. You know, oh, let me let me put some buffer in there. Let me say 16 hours. Because if you're stopping and reading and stopping and reading, you might end up spending some more time. But all these videos, I mean, if you were to play the 49 processes videos back to back, it should be roughly eight hours. I'm not talking about the chapter one, two, and three. That will add additional time. And I'm not talking about the CTTCs and these other auxiliary videos, but just the main 49 processes. Eight hours, if you play them back to back, it should take roughly eight hours. You know, So if you are relentless with it, you should be able to study all this stuff by knowledge area, Go back for a second helping study by process group. Okay. Okay, that's what I would advise. And then in terms of um, economies of uh, difficulty, the scale of difficulty, when you get done with that, you want to go to the 2020 vision quizzes. These are just quizzes on certain knowledge areas, but they're pretty mean, pretty bad. This has been around for many, many years. And what we get from a lot of the students, we get the same story, fail. I, I could barely pass one of these, but I got, guess what, four ATs on a PMP mm -hmm. exam. So these are notoriously difficult and challenging, you see. So those are there um, in terms of the next level to get to. So we have that. Um, and then we also have the challenge quizzes. So PMP challenge knowledge area quizzes. This is another dose, you know. Um, you can also get some PDFs there that will enable you to test yourself on the network diagrams. But these are really more like another level of quizzes. Um, there you go.
Okay. And these, a lot of these can be long-winded. Some of these can be long-winded, but um, these are out there as well. So the this is the endurance that you're building up for exactly. that four hours. Exactly. That's exactly. What you're building up endurance. This particular question writer, he likes long questions. And I, I didn't chastise him. I said, bring him on. You know, so he wrote a, a, a bank of very long questions with me. So that's what's in the PMP Challenge Knowledge Era quizzes. But going back to um, the main piece of stuff here, a lot of folks forget what is at the bottom. So at the bottom, we have the conclusion after the Code of Ethics quiz. We have a mini mock of 50 questions. Then we have the main mock of four hours. And then we have Agile. So don't forget the Agile pieces down there. You know, we have Agile talked about. Um, Tiffany, the person who did this, she goes into a lot of detail. Um, and then some additional training from the Scrum Alliance is there. And then the, don't forget the PMP champions. I, I know you've probably been listening to that, but we got a whole section here for the PMP champions. So all the lessons learned um, that we've had, this is the repository for all the lessons learned. So there's a lot to learn from people who've been there before you. Um, and then I've got this PMP exam failure avoidance scheme, and I talk about alignment and failure avoidance. Also not a bad one to, 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 to go over. But um, have you been marking up your PMBOK guide, Fabian? Um, yes, I have. <laughs> you got it all color-coded with post-its, stickies, things like that? Yes. Cool. That I would highly recommend that. Um, and... When you're um, totally on the mend and you're ready to go full throttle, um, let's do this thing. I know you're smart. I know you can do it. You know, we just need to tie up our shoelaces and get this thing done. Right. Okay. Um, and also, the uh, I know that the PMP or the PMI, mm -hmm. they actually offer a discount if you are a member in terms of if someone wanted another hard copy of the PMBOK guide. Oh, yeah. They give you, they give, I think they give the PMBOK to you for, don't quote me on this, but I want to say it is at least 10 bucks less or something like that when you finally do the mats. I think it's like 50 something. Exactly. I think, yeah. Have you, have you purchased a copy? you got a copy. Yes, right? I have a copy. Good, good, good. And you've got the PDF, right, as well? I do. Cool, cool. Awesome. Yeah. You see, my PMBOK guide is falling apart, you know, because... <laughs> It's been used to train all sorts of uh, uh, companies worldwide, but um, I'm probably gonna have to buy another one if it falls apart too badly. But I use my electronic one as well, okay. yeah. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate all of your help and all of your insight today. You're welcome, Fabian. Thank you for being on the journey with us and I'm looking forward to, to getting this done with you. Good. Okay, well, let's uh, see if we can um, share this video. So um, please tell me, Fabian um, and Adam, if you're able to hear what I'm about to share. I'm going to try to share um, something here and see if you can hear it. Oh, probably not. Can't hear it. You can't hear anything, can you? No. Yeah. This, no. this is my, this is my little puzzle to sort out. I guess. Um, okay, let me try to sort this out. I, I wanted to go back to Vickers's question regarding how to make it interesting. So I think this. Oh yeah, I see what's happening. This is my, this is my little. Okay, I, I just unmuted myself. You're welcome, Layla. You are welcome. You are welcome. Okay. Um, so let me... Let me see what's going on. I think I'm hearing myself talking back to myself. 
And now this should work better. So let's see if we can get it to play. Can I? Let's try this again. Um, do you hear anything? No. No. Uh -huh. Okay. I heard something. Oh. Yeah. Do you hear that? There we go. Yes. Was mm -hmm. it clear enough? Huh. Okay. So I'm going to mute. Think, I think if we're all quiet. Okay. I'm going to mute myself and um, then I'll play it. Let me go back. No sound. Yeah, I can't tell. Are we rewinding or going forward? All right. So it, you, it seems like you couldn't hear it, right? Correct. Okay, no. let me let me leave the meeting temporarily. Um, Zoom has a little bit of a, a, a glitch um, in which it just goes a little bit crazy. I'm going to leave for a second, and then when I come back, I'll be able to share it properly. So just hang on. I'm going to make you guys the co-hosts. Um, and then when I come back, I will just take, OK. I'll take I'll take control back when I come when I return. So I'm going to leave. I'll see you guys in a few seconds. Okay. Okay, I'm back. And I'm hoping that I'm able to share sensibly now. So let's see. Um, let me see if it'll let me share. Um, okay, this should work. You gotta love technology. Okay, everyone. Let me first just say. So, do you hear that? Yes. Good. Thank you. How proud yeah. I am, everyone, that we have come this far together. We've been working as a team meeting our deliverables, communicating properly, staying within our range of variances. I can see that I picked all the right people for this team. Now we are entering one of the most critical phases of the project. Now some of you worked with Jim on the VX project and you remember what happened there? It wasn't pretty. You're telling me. Man, I'm lucky I still have a job after that one. Oh, but it wasn't your fault, Henry. He never called you and the rest of the team in on risk assessment. Heck, I don't think that he even did an official risk assessment plan. Just got a few what ifs from the lead engineer. You know, maybe if he had, things would have worked out differently. But in any case, 
I am determined not to let that happen here. So, let's see what each of you have. Well, I see that our biggest problem now that we've moved into the prototype phase and we've added specs to the TMX is that the glass encasement for the HUD, it's gonna have to be like the single biggest piece of polycarbonate ever delivered. And no one has ever done that before. Wow. Well, where are we getting it from? Who's the vendor? Flightwing. Flightwing? But aren't they the same ones that failed to deliver the thermal imager on the last Project VX sometime and wound up getting fired? You want to talk about risk? Yes, they are. But from what I'm reading here, they are also the ones who could possibly deliver what we need. So here's what we're going to do this time to protect our assets. We are going to transfer the risk to them. If they want this work, and I'm sure that they do, they are going to have to deliver on time or pay the price. Mm -hmm. They are going to own this risk. I'm going to insist on a guarantee in the way of a performance bond. Okay, Mary, I get it. They have a great incentive now to deliver and deliver on time. Mm -hmm. But Jake just said that no one, not even Flightwing, has ever built a canopy that big before. What if they can't deliver? Well, we document that as an accepted risk. Jake, Henry, I want you to come up with some worst case scenario alternatives for this one. Yeah. All right. Well, that was just a little clip from um, the movie called The Time Machine Project. And I, I just show that to underscore the importance of making it fresh and making it fun and coming up with stories in your head. So what you're seeing pretty much is a story orchestrated in my head from experience in project management. You know, I get other people to pitch into the story, but I created a movie uh, called The Time Machine Project. And uh, some folks, some of our students have watched this um, on Vimeo. Um, it, it used to be... I'm looking to bring some of these elements into the main course so that you guys can watch the entire thing, you who are on the course uh, right now. So, Vikas, going back to your question, you got to make it fun for yourself. If you make it fun for yourself, um, it tends to stick a lot better. And, you know, it tends to be something to look forward to as far as making the book come alive. You know, just change the background <laughs> like that. Change your environment in your head and it becomes more fun for you. All right, let's see if there are any additional questions so I can let you guys get back to your studying. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, I think someone did join Zoom. Let me go back there. So who is on? Let me unmute. Hello, who's on? Eris? I get the name right? Ah, okay. Oh, you got your application accepted. Congrats, that is awesome. When are you taking it? What is the, what's the big day? <laughs> August 3rd. Wow. Wow. August 3rd is um, about three weeks away. Good. Um, have you watched my video of what to do leading up to the test like a day before? I recommend watching that and putting some of those things into practice. That's what I would recommend. Do you have any questions that I can answer for you? Do you, do you want me to unmute you so you can speak or do you want to type in the question that you have? What would you like? Any question in particular? Oh, what you should focus on in the next three weeks. Great question. Hold on to that thought, Eris. I'm going to take your question after I take a look into the YouTube channel. So, Vikas, I hope this gives you an idea of what to do. You got to make it new. You got to make it fresh. You got to come out with scenarios. Okay? Come out with scenarios and, um, yeah, make it fun. Layla says, unfortunately, I can't join on Zoom. No local number. Oh, there's no local number? Okay. All right. Very good. No problem, Layla. Type in any questions you might have. 
Okay. Um, Vika says, PMP is all about making connections. Absolutely. Vika says, watching your videos helps us to understand those connections. Need more stuff like this so the connectors can be built correctly. Also, any reference book which covers all the gaps. Um, so... Um, I'm trying to see if Ginger's book was updated because Ginger had a practice test book that she wrote with Jay Leroy Ward, who is also known in the industry, but I don't think they have updated that book. So Ginger gave me a book. I've got my own copy of that book. Um, the only thing is I'm not sure if the book has been updated for the, um, for the sixth edition. Not entirely sure. So, yeah, not sure if this book has been updated, unfortunately. Um, and since, I mean, you guys aren't trainers, I wouldn't want to give you the charge of having to update it, but she actually wrote a really great book. This is a copy she gave me, see, and that book is, um, PMP exam practice test and study. So it was a good book to read. Um, you see, so for this book, if you are going to use any part of this book, in fact, you know, except for the problems, the math problems, I really can't, um, I really can't validate all the other um, pieces of information. And unfortunately, it hasn't been updated. But what I tell our students is, just go by what you've seen other people do. Our book, the Project Management Essentials book, a lot of people just use this and the pen book guy, they do great, you know. Um, Case in point, case in point. Let, let me show you the degree to which you should be studying a book. You know, there are books and there's a read. That is another factor. So let me show you the importance of reading the book before I come back to Eris's question. This might actually help you as well. So this guy right here is one of our PMP gurus from Virginia. He was in my class, the same class um, Colonel Crail, who is the, the um, student I talked about in the beginning, who went to South Korea, same class he was in. Now, take a look at what John did. First of all, he zoomed into the pages of the book where he needed to get some additional information. He did the same thing for the PMBOK guide. And then for each one of our quizzes, and he notes the page in this book, notes the page, and his first attempt, do you see this here? He actually records, documents his first attempt, documents his second attempt, does the same thing, first attempt, second attempt, and looks for what he got wrong. See, this tells me this guy wasn't just reading the book to check the box, he was reading the book to get to perfect mastery of the content. So long story short, the story about John is despite not doing well after the praise on the praise on mark, he got four proficiencies. He closed the gaps. So close the gaps. When you read the book, when you read the book, hone in, you know, to, to the content hold into the content. Just take a look at all of the different attempts and make sure you are increasing. Look at this, from 25 the first time to 30 the second time. That tells me someone, you know, was getting more knowledge into their banks. So that's the way to do it. All right, Eris, still on, on this question that you had, I wanna bring up a few things to do as you prepare. 
This is pretty much exemplified here. Steps to achieve success. You've got to observe PMBOK trends. So tell me, are you the trends in changes, change requests, WP, WPI, WPR, deliverables, verified deliverables, validated deliverables, the different techniques? Are you doing that, Eris? If you're not observing the trends, you want to you, you want to catch as much fish as you can with one net. So observing the trends, you know, observing the trends of WPD, WPI, WPR. Where are they from? So where does this come from? Where does this go to? Where does that come from? Where does that go to? WPR, where does it come from? Where does it go to? Deliverables, where does it come from? Where does it go to? Verified deliverables, where does it come from? Where does it go to? See? Accepted deliverables, where does it come from? Where does it go to? And the story goes on and on. And things such as the business documents. you got to understand the concept of these. These are not from within the project. Where are they going? What are the two big ones? The business case. And the benefits management plan. You got to understand these in great detail for your initiating process group, okay? And then specific tools and techniques like regression analysis. Where is that used and for what? Things like product analysis. Where is that used? Things like risk categorization. Where is it used? So what am I telling you to do? I'm telling you to go through page 686 to 694 and identify where all of these tools and techniques are used with a fine tooth comb. All right? That's what I'm asking you to do. So observe trends. Study methodically, taking notes leading up to your exam, if you haven't already. Cover all the gaps in quizzes. Take quizzes and mock exams repeatedly until perfection. Make use of flashcards and games. I would say immerse yourself in audio and video. Read the PMBOK guide. Read the essentials guide if you're one of our students. If not, reliable, tested, and tried study guide. And I honestly cannot recommend any VCAS other than you know, if Gingers was out, I would have recommended that. But in absence of that, I would say do your research and uh, decide thoroughly. You definitely want to use this. This has been used for students who got five eight. Great hands if you stuck to those two. Pay close attention to all the key ITTOs. Pay particular attention to process names. Distinguish between fictitious PMBOK terms and real terms. Also bear in mind on the exam, sometimes the term may not be the original uh, PMBOK term. They may use a term, for example, let's take managed quality. They may just use quality assurance. You've got to know it's managed quality they're talking about. Uh, pay particular attention to differences between an output and a tool and technique. Pay close attention to formulas and technicalities. Uh, get a study partner or study group for seven to 15 days and retake the mock exam. So I'm not sure which mocks you've been taking. I would say go to Prazy and sign up for the mocks. Take them, get to perfection in them if you haven't. Consistently draw out page 61 um, until the exam. Well, now it's page 25. So draw out page 25 till the exam and do all the IQ test exercises. That was a book I had in the past. Unfortunately, the PMI moved the goalpost. So uh, this is page 25, not 61. 
And this one, unfortunately, work anymore. PMI moved the goalpost. But I would say watch my mainline video. I have a video called Pembok Mainline. Definitely watch that, and it will help you. Okay. I hope that is of help or value to you. There's just so much to talk about um, that I could go on and on and on and on and on. So, Eris, if you go to the Praiseon, um site, and like I said, I don't make this a, a Praiseon, um material um, a call because it's, it's not that. It's about helping people. So I'm just going to privately send you the, um, the link to it to check it out. Um, but at the same time, in trying to help you, I have to, I have to give you some stuff to, um, oh, sorry, Adam, that was more for everyone. Okay. So Adam wanted to be kid. Absolutely. Absolutely, Adam. So we'll talk about that. Yeah, there's, there's definitely a, you know, for the group, Thank you. there's something I posted on the group. Yeah. If you go to the group, you'll actually see a video. So we'll just, we'll talk about it. I'll ping you and shoot you an email to take, take it offline. Yeah. But thanks for coming, Adam. Appreciate you, man. And yeah, um, absolutely. So well, thanks for putting this together. And uh, I think it's really great that you did, um, did that for your friends, you know, to kind of commemorate them. That's a fantastic thing. Uh, it just speaks to your character as well and uh, the kind of person that you are. Thank you, Adam. It, it's an honor for me to do this. And um, I'm really, really looking forward to people finding value from this. That's why I put it together to add value. So thank you. And um, we'll, we'll chat, chat soon. Absolutely. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Adam. Take care. All right, um, so that is it, um, Eris. You can see it. Fabian says, a great outline, reading answers, eliminate two IES. <laughs> yeah, you, you want to go through the question options very, very well. There is one more formula I have, Eris. Um, I mean, it's very, it's, it's very um, basic, but it is, um, it's rather important as well. So let me check on YouTube and see our friends there first. And then I'm going to come back and share some additional pointers with you, Eris. So hold on. Um, um, oh, Anil said the sound is not there. I'm sorry if you were not able to hear the sound. Um, uh, you're welcome, Layla. Uh, I'm glad you're seeing that. Very good, Nikki. Awesome. Yeah. Um, thank you, Anil. I'm sorry if you were not able to hear the videos, unfortunately. Um, Vika says, one question, Phil. Change request. Oh, yes. Don't get me started on that, Anil. <laughs> Let me show you the page in the Pembok Guide where this is talked about. So, Anil, this is one of the um, groundbreaking discoveries, <laughs> at least from my own layman's point of view. Um, follow me to page 115 in the Pembok Guide, Vikas. Page 115, and go to the third paragraph. This is what it says. It states, although changes may be initiated verbally, they should be recorded in written form. You get that? And entered into the change management and or configuration management system. So what they're saying, to give you a visual VCAS to make sure it sticks really well, what they're saying is that if you get a change request, that change request, verbal change request, that change request needs to be put into 
a written change request form, if you will. See? You put it into a written change request form, what follows is it then enters into the configuration management system, or if you will, some people would just say it's a change management system, whatever. And when we say system, bear in mind that this could be manual or automated. And once it goes into the system, in some companies, the system is where all of the reviews and approvals take place. So you have review one, review one, review two, review three. All of these people could be part of a change control board, or it may not be a formal change control board, but they're just part of a review team. And the change request is going to move through the process until it gets to the end where the final approval, you got approval or you got rejection. Whatever the case, it's already in the CMS, a change management system or configuration management system. It's going to get no project manager could print and share, you know, whatever comes out of this. And what do we call that? That is really a change log. So in many a company where we allow changes into a system, we look as really a log, a change, and it's a change management system, maybe used for configuration management purposes as well. It could also be used for a change log. So a lot of times when PMI show you the output is a change log, really on the back end, you have a PMIS. And in the PMIS, you've got your configuration management, you've got your change management. And out of this, you can get a log of what has been approved for change and what has been rejected for change and anything that has been submitted for change. All right, so that's how that works, um, VCAS. I hope that answers your question. So I'm gonna go back uh, quick here to um, the question that um, Eris had, just to, Anil, how are you doing? Um, may I unmute you? Can you chat in and let me know if you uh, wanna be unmuted or not? Um, if you can talk, we can, chat if you're able no pressure i know some folks are at work and are not able to uh, chat but just let me know all right so uh Eris, i wanted to share with you this additional formula it's a bit of a funny one but i call it the formula for pmp success okay so study 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 which you've been doing Add on reliable quizzes and modules. Add on a layer of quizzes. Add on some flashcards and cram sheets. So yesterday, we had a call with Madison Hall, who is out of Kamloops, Canada, one of my students. And she shared how the flashcards were helpful because we made flashcards in class. I strongly believe in taking the mock exams until you pass them fully. And then I also believe in audio because I'm an auditory learner. So I believe in audio immersion. I also believe in studying the PMBOK guide. I also believe in having a very firm power review, like powering through all the content. I strongly believe in that as well. Um, the power reviews, you can actually find the power reviews, Eris. Um, so again, not to make this a, a product, um, product-oriented discussion, but um, if you went to the Praiseon site, um, you could find the power review, like here. Yeah. You can find, yeah, this is the power review. When I say power review, this is really what I'm referring to, 16 hours of rapidly um, accelerating through a PEMA guide. So power review, and I highly advise, I don't know who your instructor is, Eris, check in with your instructor, get inspired, get 
consistently motivated. You see how Adam jumped on, see how Fabian jumped on. Those are my PMP exam students who are on the journey. And that's what you should do. You should be, you know, checking in with your instructor, your coach, whoever that person may be regularly. All right. Oh, Anil is willing to chat. Very good. So let us unmute Anil. I hope that helps um, Eris to give some further ideas. Uh, Anil is here. Hello, Anil. Hi. Hello, how are you doing? Oh, Anil, it's a little bit muffled, I must say. Can you move closer to the machine or to the, uh, to the phone? Oh, I'm so sorry, Anil. The, the sound is really, really choppy. Say that again. Yeah, hello. Yes, I heard you say hello. Uh huh. Yeah, actually, uh, I am going to uh, uh, Anil, I'm, I'm sorry, Anil. I really cannot hear. I can't, cannot make out what is happening. Are you on a phone line or are you on the computer? I this. It's the the sound is the sound is very very choppy, Anil. Very very. I heard you say okay, okay, no problem. I heard that piece. You see, Anil, Anil. Can you do me a favor and send me your phone number? Let me see if I can give you a call from my phone instead. Can you do that? Okay, let's, let's try that route. Let me see if I can give you a buzz and we can, we can talk. Uh, Paul, my PMP guru. Paul, how are you doing? I am so excited to see you, Paul. So is do I put a plus, Anil, plus eight zero? Is it a plus eight zero? Oh, I see, plus, okay, let me try that. That's India, okay, 800. Paul, good to see you. I was um, just thinking about you the other day and looking at your L sheet it's in a previous uh, recording we had we had had so it's great to see you join uh, let's see did I get all the numbers I think I think it's ringing. Do you, do you hear it ringing or not? Oh. Uh. Hello? Hello, Anil. Yes, I can hear you much better now. How are you doing? Yeah, I am fine. Good. That is, uh, a, that is a lot better. Yeah. I got some tips. Uh, for PMP exam lesson, actually, uh, I I am planning to attend this exam in month of October. In October, hmm. Yeah. So uh, means uh, I need uh, some suggestion uh, from your side. Means uh, uh, actually I go through all the means, uh, topics, but still I am not uh, confident. Uh, so that's why I have postponed my date from June to October. Mm -hmm. I see. Very good. You know, you know, you've got some gurus out there in India who are very good with the PMP. Have you looked at attending any of their um, training at all? Training, training from your side. 
the training from some of the so there, there are a couple of people that come to mind you might you might want to check them out are you still on the call because if you've not been for live training i would say look for some live training we got we got a couple of pmp gurus that i know out there in india so if you if you want to look into some live train which part of india are you in first which city Okay. Which, which city in India are you in? I am uh, from uh, New Delhi. Oh, New Delhi. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let me um, let me copy you in chat. I'm going to copy you a couple of um, <clears throat> institutes for you to check out because um, I, I strongly believe in live training. And if you're feeling stuck, that could be um, something you can look into. Um, so I'm going to send you to Ari's site. Ari is a PMP. Um, but this is in Chennai. Chennai is probably too far for you. I'm not sure if they have anything in New Delhi, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shoot you his, um, his website. So check that out. Um, and then there's also a well-known um, trainer. You might have seen him on YouTube, um, Saket. A lot of people have gone for training there and, and say good things. So I'm going to copy that link if I can find so, it. So, ha so, so have you text me this link or um, it's in the, Yeah, it's in the, in the meeting. Do you see the meeting invite? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I typed it into the meeting chat. And then I will also send you, um, yeah, his YouTube, his YouTube um, channel. I think you, because live, I, I subscribe to live stuff a lot. Check, check out those links and see what you think. But let me give you some advice on top of that, okay? On top of what I've shared with you, let me just be plain and honest. If you have not read this book, like your money depends on it, you're doing the wrong thing. Have you read this, like the Pembok Guide, um, Inside Out? Have you read it, Inside Out? Yeah, Pembok Box, uh, I am studying. Uh, I, mean, uh, I didn't complete uh, all the chapters, but uh, still I am studying. Good. And, uh, Good, yeah, good. Yeah. So, 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 Anil, you got to read the book to understand whatever they're talking about. And honestly, this channel, you know, between the channels I've shared with you, I've shared with you Saket's channel. Um, I've shared, you know, our channel is Praise On. I've shared Chris's uh, channel. If you check out those channels, I don't see why you shouldn't get more than enough brain power to kill this exam. There's a lot of content. Our channel has over a thousand videos. So even for me, like when I'm trying to study something, I Google crazy on whatever the thing is, because I might have forgotten that that information is out there, like crazy on contract types or crazy on uh, network diagrams or, or some to that effect, you know, and, and the, the channels I've shared with you, I think that is definitely more than enough for you to get to the finish line. Seriously. I think it's definitely more than enough. I heard this from a number of students as well who say, Phil, I listen, I, I watch your channel and I watch this channel. Um, you know, Saket has some stuff out there. And people say they watch those channels. Um, actually, there was a student of ours from India who went through both channels as well. So I would encourage you to look for live training if you can. If you cannot find live training, um, then just do the best you can to um, ask questions. So on the videos you see on the Praise Young channel, ask questions. Just type a question there. Say, I'm struggling with this. I need help. You know, can someone help me? Or like another of our... Uh, students has been doing over the past number of months, um, 
Mohanad, he has actually been using the PMI, official PMI group on LinkedIn as a vehicle to get questions answered. So, and a lot of people have jumped in to help him. One of the members on there, Kyron, I see Kyron jumping in to help Mohanad a lot. So that's the kind of community we're in. It's a community where people will help you. If you say I'm stuck on the LinkedIn channel, you're bound to get help. Let me, let me ask my, my buddy, Paul here, one of my bosses to pitch in. Yeah. Paul, are you there? Yeah. Paul? Yeah, yeah. But as far as, you know. Hey, how are you doing, Paul? Current status. I'm guessing you want to follow up with James as well. Yeah. Oh, I think Paul is, Paul, Paul doesn't know I'm talking to him. All right. But the, the bottom line is this, Anil. You got to read this, one. Two, ask for help on the channels I've shared with you. And last but not least, don't take the exam until you've done some very realistic quizzes. You know, like our quizzes, I would say go for that if you could. We've had students from India sign up like Krishnan, Krishnan Aya, one of our students out of India. Maybe I'll even ping uh, Krishnan to see if he can mentor you. Krishnan did the CAPM exam, got 14 or 13 above targets. And then he did the PMP exam and got five above targets. So it is doable if you do the right thing. You got to do the right thing, which is study hard, but also make sure you're honest. If you don't understand a concept, study it, ask questions, don't leave that stone unturned until you do. So what, what part of project management, uh, what part of project management do you do? Which industry? As an engineering, medical? Actually, uh, yeah, uh, actually, I am working in, uh, I was working in telecom industry right now, I'm working in the IT sector, in Ericsson Global. So you as started off in manager. telecom? Te are you still in telecom or what? No, right now I am working for IT sector in Ericsson Global. Oh, you IT. Eastern Global. Eastern Global. Yeah. Ericsson. Ericsson. Oh, Ericsson, of course. Oh, yeah, I know people that have worked in Ericsson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we've had a number of... Um, Ericsson is still kind of telecom, right? But you're working more yeah, in the yeah, IT. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I get it. So you're working more in IT within telecom. So it shows me you've got yeah. a strong technical background. So, Ania, what do you know the 49 processes by heart? Yeah. Initiating, planning, executing, monitoring, and controlling, uh, closing, and part of this is like uh, number one uh, means uh, entry, uh, uh, integration, scope, schedule, cost, quality, resource, uh, then risk, uh, uh, then communication, communication, uh, 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 procurement, stakeholder management. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Good. So I, I asked you for the processes. You told me the process groups, tiny things like that. You got to be careful of. If they ask you process, you got to be telling them the processes. So you told me the knowledge areas, which is schedule, cost, scope, risk. All that is knowledge areas, and then in, um, initiating, planning, executing. Those are process groups. But do you know the forty-nine processes? The processes that fall into each knowledge area. Do you know those? to each knowledge area uh, like uh, uh, means uh, you are asking for uh, like uh, first is integration in which uh, means uh, prepare uh, project charter uh, there you go approval of, you, approval of stakeholder there you go so this is the deal Anil you are not firm in those in fact, you got a lot of work to do to get the 49 under your belt. So what I would advise you to do is page 25 in the PMBOK guide, right? Page 25. You got to be able to dump page 25 down and explain what you're writing for each one of the 49. So before you get to comfort for the exam, you need to know all of your processes your process groups, your knowledge areas, you should be able to explain each one. So um, that should be something you look out for as you go through them. 
you have to commit it to memory in some way. And then you got to know what exactly you're doing in each one of the 49, because each one of the 49 has a benefit. You see what, do you have your PMBOK guide with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, can you, can we open it so that we take a look? Can we do that? So in my system, in my system, uh, I opened it. Oh, okay. So I am, yeah, yeah. Can you open up to so, page, can you open up to page 75, for example? I want to show you something there. Okay. And for those of you joining, thank you very much. Paul, thanks for jumping on. I know that you're probably in the middle of the work day. Appreciate it. Patricia, thank you for joining. I see you just jumped on. And um, I'm going to come back and see if you've got any questions. So, um, uh, Anil, is it on your computer? Uh, no, actually, uh, uh, Miss. Uh, uh, 75 page number 75. Yeah, develop project charter. Good. So Anil, this is what. So actually, I am talking. I am talking from myself. Ah. And uh, this PM uh, PM box is in my system in my laptop. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, okay. Cool. So Anil, this is what you need to do. There are 49 processes that are similar to what you're seeing on page 75. You get what I'm saying? Okay. So 4.1 is develop project charter. What we're looking at yeah, here. Yeah. But look, but look, let me show you this. It says develop project charter. I got one minute, one minute. I got your point. Uh, means in project integration, uh, there are uh, five processes like develop five One is develop project charter. Second is develop project management plan. Third is um, direct and manage project. Fourth is monitor and control project. Fifth is close project. Yes. And in, uh, yes. Yeah, like this, like this in project scope management, uh, we go to uh, in planning and monitoring. In planning, uh, plan scope management, select requirement, define scope. Yes. Is, yes. And, and, and in monitoring, like validate scope, control scope. Exactly. In, uh, yes. Do you yeah, know? Do you know that by heart? Can you? Do you know that by heart now? Do you know it in your memory, or is it still a bit loose? By heart. By heart, actually, uh, means uh, uh, means uh, da daily uh, one uh, means uh, for five minutes. Uh, all I, I see all these steps. Good. Uh, I am trying to yeah. I am trying to uh, go by heart for all these steps. But uh, when you ask, then that time I was confused. It means okay, I threw you off balance. Time. Okay, because the word process refers to develop project charter, develop project management plan, all those ones that you mentioned. So those are processes. When you talk about process group, it's initiating, planning, executing, and so on. When you talk about knowledge area, it's integration, scope, schedule, and so on. So you got to know your page 25. Okay. Okay. I, got, I, I, I got your point. It means uh, there are five process groups initiating, planning, executing, monitoring, and closing. Yes. And uh, 10 knowledge areas like project integration, scope, schedule, cost, quality, resource, yes. uh, risk, uh, risk, then communication, uh, then stakeholder, then uh, uh, procurement. Like Absolutely. This. Absolutely. That's it. And then I and, want you to go. And, uh, go on. And, uh, and uh, 49 and RD uh, means. Uh, And is the process area? No, not process processes. Process? Yes, 49 processes. So let, make this your mantra. 49 processes. Okay, okay, okay. There are 49 processes yes. uh, within, within this uh, process group and uh, knowledge area. Yes, there are 49 processes, five process groups, 10 knowledge areas. That, that's the first thing I make my students do. I make them do a mantra when they when they come into class they say five process groups 10 knowledge areas 49 processes they say it every day they recite it like they like they're doing a religious ceremony I, I make them recite it so it sticks in their head but the next thing you're going to do on top of that anil is as you're reading each process you need to find these words so if you go to line three 
it says the key benefits of this process are that uh, just uh, just uh, means uh, give me one moment can you tell me meeting id uh, i am trying to connect to, uh, with you uh, through my system oh can um, you tell me meeting id the id is let's see the zoom id right yeah 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 only id okay hang, link. hang on a second let me see um it's 125 155 755 755 720 That's right. Okay, okay. I am trying to connect you. Awesome. Cool. I see we have a few more friends here. E A M E M A C R Y. Thank you for joining. And I'm not sure if this is Patricia or not. A seven seven zero number. So, so um, Anil, are you there? Anil, are you? Uh, I joined. I joined with you. Okay, you uh, on Zoom. On Zoom. Oh, I see on Zoom. Good. So, Anil, what I want you to do as you read all the forty-nine processes this is the last thing I'll tell you. As you read all the processes, can you, can you unmute? Can you? Uh, can you unmute me on Zoom? Oh, on Zoom. Let's see if this works. Hold on, I'm going to mute you here. All right. Let me see. Are you there, Neil? Yeah, yeah. That is a lot better. Good. Can you still hear me? Oh, please, and, please and we'll do. Good. So, um, Anil, the last thing I want you to do, how many months have you been studying for PMP? Anil? Yeah, yeah. Please, please unmute me. You are you are unmuted right now. You you are not on mute. I can hear you. Anil, I think we lost Anil again. Oh dear. Okay. Unfortunate. I I wanted Anil to know that he should read his benefits. Oh here, this him? No. Um, Anil needs to read his process benefits the key benefit of each process. And then he also needs to read the key, no, the key benefits of each process and the frequency of each process. That is what I was trying to get a nail to um, understand. But um, let's see if he jumps back on. Let me unmute some of our other friends here. Who's on 770? Anyone on 770? Three three zero. No one. Okay. Let's see who else. Patricia, are you there, Patricia? Yes. Can you hear me? Hey, Patricia. I can. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. 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 How's your studying coming along? It's going. Coming along, good. I... Um. I had questions. I keep hearing echoes, so I'm sorry. It's just bugging me. Okay. I don't know what's going on. Because I'm the 770 oh, number as well. Okay, that's, that may be the echo. Oh, you are the 770. Okay, I got you. Got yeah. You. Okay. Cool. So um, do you have any questions about any of the um, PMBOK topics? Well, my biggest thing was how do I study it? And I think I asked that question yesterday or a couple of days ago, and you showed me some pages towards the back, starting at 561. And I think you just said to study by knowledge area and then go back again and study by process group. Absolutely. I think there's okay. something else that can help you here, Patricia. 
Okay. And I've been meaning to um, put this up on the PMP website that we, uh, the prison uh, website. So okay. let me see if I can find it. Um, let's see. Time. It's a timetable. Do you have that Excel timetable by any chance? Have you seen an Excel timetable that shows you how to study? No, no, that would be nice. Okay, I'm going to pull it up from wherever it is hiding. I know we've got it somewhere. Oh, there we go. So, um, call this the Prazion Self-Study PMP Exam Program, 30 days. So let, me, let me get okay. that up. Let me see if I can send it. Are you on a computer right now? See if I, I send am. It. Yeah? Okay. Let me try and get this. Sent to everyone. Everyone who is on the Zoom will be able to download it. Um, let me see. Okay. There are so many files on this thing. Okay, crazy on. 30 days. Uh -huh. Okay. And then I had a question about the frequency that you just mentioned. Okay. So do you, did, do you see what I just shared with uh, uh, Zoom folks? No. Is it in the chat window? Yes, yeah, in the chat. Except pop-up blockers are on your system. You should be able to see it. No? No. Okay, let me try this. I'm gonna try sending it to you. Um, outside of the meeting. And I can send you my um, email address. Too. Yeah, just remember what, just remind me what it is. How, what letters does it start with? P A D E D O Y I N. Oh, I can't find it on this email. Just, you know what? Just type it into me. Thank you. We don't mm -hmm. have any. Oh, thank you. Good. All right. Oh, nothing popped up. Oh, I sent it to only Anil. That is why. My uh, <laughs> not everyone. One of those because he was the last chat that I was on. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Let me try that again. All right. Here we go. Sent it again. You get it? Nope. Huh. Did I send it to Anil? No, I sent it to everyone. Eric's got it. Oh, yeah? Okay. So I'm going to send it to you in email. And just bear with me. I will get to any questions that came in. Um, what should I call this? Uh, study plan. Okay. I'm just going to attach it to a regular email. Uh, and do check your um, junk mail or something. Yeah, <laughs> it could be in the junk mail. Okay. Google has become quite fond of sending my stuff to junk mail for some reason. <laughs> so I'm just going to say hi so that it can actually register some text because. I don't know what Google's spam settings are, but it just seems to go berserk if there's no text sometimes. Maybe thinks it's mm. spam. So you should find it in a little bit. And I'm going to share it um, here so that people who are on the call can see what I'm talking about. I've actually shared this a number of times on oh, got the it. channel. Oh, you got it? Cool. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, so if you take a look at my screen. Oh, here we go again. The screen's gone weird like it did before. But anyway, um, if you take a look here, the chapters that you've got on the LMS are pretty much here. 
Mm -hmm. And then all of those other 2020 vision quizzes, the mock exam, the grand challenge mock, they're all here. And you've got a timeline mm -hmm. showing you. So if you get started on the 28th of May, let me actually make this. Oh, C4. Oh, okay. So if you, let's say you got started on 720. You should be done with this curriculum by 824, within roughly 30 plus days, mm -hmm. okay. if you're following. So yeah, just go in and change the date from whatever it is, 528. Just change this one date. But I would say don't change the durations, uh, because if you do, um, it might mess up the um, formula, the way the formulas mm -hmm. have been built. So let me see if, if I can change that. Okay, I guess you can change it. So if you say fail, I, I can only study for I can only I can study two days, a chapter every two days, then you know, it just, it's just going to push out your date. But still, oh, those are days, not hours. Days. Yeah, days. Okay. Days. Um, so oh yeah, God. so I, I pretty much made them one day a piece. So yeah, that is, that is days. So this is showing 35 days. So this gives okay. you a regimen to stick to. This is doable. I've, you know, like Lieutenant uh, Colonel, um, who came on from um, um, Fort Lee a few weeks ago. I don't know if you were on that call, but I sent him this and I said, look, just stick to this, pound out the content. And he stuck to this like no man's business. And he's now PMP. He, he <laughs> just stuck to this. There were times he would say, Phil, you know, I'm having, having issues. I don't think, you know, I'm have, having challenges. I need to get back on. Similar to what Adam, who just jumped off, said. And I'm like, just ride that thing. Keep going. And he did. And he's a PMP now. So this timetable is realistic and absolutely doable. Just got to stick to it. Okay. All Thanks right. for sharing. You're welcome. I hope that answered the question. It did, it's because I am on the LMS and I wasn't really sure in what order to do the mocks mm. and these exams. So this does help. Cool. So mini mock first, that's for sure. Do your mini mock first. Mm -hmm. Then after the mini mock, do the main mock after you've, of course, gone through the chapters. After the main mock, the, we call it the marathon mock, then the other mocks, yep, pretty much as we have it um, listed there. Listed, okay. All right. Cool. All right. Let's see who else. I hope that answered. Oh. Any other questions? Yeah, the one about the frequency. Is that like, is it iterative? Or what, what do you mean by frequency? You said key benefit and then know the frequency. Oh, yes. Yes. So let me show you that, for example. So, um, Anil, give me a second. I'm going to unmute you shortly. But this is in line with what I was about to tell Anil. So page 75, it says, the last two lines of page 75 says, uh, last three lines, I beg your pardon, says, this process is performed once or at predefined points in the project. So what they're telling you is, develop project charter happens once or it could happen at predefined points, such as, at the beginning of a phase, you could charter phases. So this is going to help you further understand. If you come to a process and it says this happens more than once, you could ask the question, well, why? I always thought this to be a one-time process. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? So yes. you got to unravel the mystery behind the process. Okay? Okay. That helps. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for joining us today. All right, let's unmute Anil. Anil, are you there? Anil? No. Are you, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah I, can, I can. Good. So what I was telling you in the beginning is pretty much what I just said. You got to know yeah, the actually, benefit and you uh, uh, 
Uh, but I, uh, I want to ask one thing. You have shared an Excel sheet. Anil, it's it's gone it's gone on clear again. So I don't know what is going on. It seems like anytime you're on the phone, it just gets upset. Hello, hello. hello. I, I can hear you, but very clear. Yeah. So what I am asking, uh, actually, you have shared one Excel uh, in which there was one student for training. So how we can attend? Uh, there. Anil, do you know? Do you want to? Do you know what? Chat in, type it in to me because it is very, very choppy. Um, okay. yeah. Oh, give, me, give me one minute. Okay, Fabian, I see that question. Distinguish between OPAs and EEFs. <laughs> very good. So, OPAs are not. Factors. <laughs> I know it sounds a bit funny, but you got to remember OPAs are not factors. OPAs are assets. So you can look at OPAs as things. Let me, let me give you a quick whiteboard here. Okay. So... If you think about, um, let's call it influences on projects, right? Things that can influence the project, they're broken down into EEFs and OPAs, okay? And for EEFs, you got to commit this in some fashion. I think it will help memory wise, but for EEFs, I gotta be careful because my friends at Google, they don't like a particular word in this mnemonic that I have. So I'm gonna have to be creative. Maybe I'll change the mnemonic for today. Um, oh, this is a good mnemonic. This, this is not the problem mnemonic. So it's only great individuals inspire resources every day. Only great individuals inspire resources every day. Those are your EEFs. So what does the O stand for? Organizational culture, structure and governance. The G stands for geographic distribution of facilities. I for infrastructure, the other for IT, the other resource availability, and the E for employee capability. This is on page 38 of the PMBOK guide, okay? This stuff are not assets. They're all factors. Think about it. The culture of the organization, it's a factor. It's not, it's not distributed. That's not an asset. It's a factor. Now, Infrastructure, what you need to remember is in this, we're looking at the availability of the infrastructure. The infrastructure you've got available can influence the project. The lack of it influence. The IT software could influence or not. See that? Resource availability is not an asset. It's a factor. Employee capability is a factor. Now for OPAs, I have a funny mnemonic, um, but people get all emotional about it. I'm gonna change it to something that is not as harmful as what some senators have legalized <laughs> in the United States. So I'm gonna change the mnemonic to make it less harmful to those people who are gung-ho on certain things. Okay, so it goes like this. My senator legalized cranberries and granola for patients. Now you don't wanna know what the cranberry and granola really are in my mnemonic. I notice YouTube gets weird, but my senator legalized cranberry and granola for patients. So if you're on our LMS, you know what that's 
stands for. But M, marketplace conditions, S, social and cultural influences, L, legal restrictions, C, commercial databases, A, academic research, G, government or industry standards. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I am getting mixed up. This is not OPA. I'm sorry. I did get carried away in my breakdown. This is actually, okay, so there are two buckets here. This is internal EEFs, and this next one is external. I put it in the wrong place. Sorry. My senator legalized cranberry and granola. Sorry. But these are your external EEFs. So the things I'm reading here, these are EEFs that are um, external to the organization. Marketplace conditions, social and cultural influences, all these things, these are not assets. So this is page 39. These are not assets. Now, if you go a step further into the OPAs, you realize these are processes and procedures and the your company wants you to use, those are assets because somebody took time to list them out, to flesh them out, you know, to put them in a document that people can use, you know. And then the corporate knowledge base, this really refers to any of the databases that corporate owns, such as seller performance, blacklisted vendors, for example, financial records, and so on. These are on page um, 39, 40, and 41. So the major thing is these are factors. And these are assets. And Fabian find around asset versus factor. The more you cover these high-level bullets here, um, EEFs internal to the firm, EEFs external to the firm, the more you cover those, the more you realize those can't be assets. Think about it. None of those could be assets. But when you look at OPAs, it makes more sense, right? Templates that the organization uses to do business, policies, procedures, guidelines, all that stuff, okay? All right, I'm sorry, it has been a while I checked on our friends on YouTube. So I don't wanna leave them hanging. I'm trying to keep everyone satisfied. So I do need to check on them for a few minutes here. Give me a second. And then I'm gonna come back to Anil's question. And then I'm gonna try to round up. Um, Sunil, how are you doing? So Sunil, do, you don't have that Sunil? I was hoping that you had it. Okay. So Sunil says, this is a long time ago, Sunil. I apologize. I had not seen this. Um, Sunil says, is it logged into the change log after you get the written? Yes, it should be. Oh, no. It should be logged in immediately. You get a change request, it should go into a change log as a good PM. Yeah, thank you, Vikas. Thank you, Sunil. Vikas says, encode, decode. <laughs> Funny. That is hilarious, Vikas. Um, <laughs> Vikas says, live, example of communication. I'm sorry I missed all these great chats. Jennifer says, can we expand on the CR? Jennifer, you need to watch my video on change requests. Definitely. I'm going to put it in chat here. But I don't think you've watched this video. I don't think you've watched this video, Jennifer, because even I did not know this video was up on YouTube. So check that video that I just put into the link for change requests. Okay. You don't, I don't think you've watched that video, Jennifer. That is a very long video. Um, I don't know if you got my email, Jennifer, a couple of days ago. Check out, check out that. Oh dear, check that out. 
um, and this. Check that one out as well. Um, and yes, this was a question from Mario about change requests as well. Check that out. All right. And um, Jennifer, on the $50 a week course that you were on, I think you're still on it. Did you watch the video that I went through change requests for one and a half hours? You should watch that one. For one and a half hours, I went over change requests. So you need to go watch those videos, Jennifer. Okay. Watch those videos. All right. Let me go back in and see um, Sunil's uh, questions. All right. So, Neil, my friend, have you chatted it in? So I can hear you a little bit. Talk to me. Talk to me. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I changed my phone. I'm, str I'm still struggling, Anil. I'm struggling. All right. Let me call you. You've got to make it quick because I've got some stakeholders that are waiting for me. I'm going to round up with your question, but I'm calling you again. You've got to round up in five minutes quick. So tell me, um, pick up the phone. Pick up the phone. So, Anil, Anil, I beg your pardon, are you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, what I am asking, you are scared of an Excel sheet. Okay. So, uh, in that Excel sheet, there was a schedule for uh, PM training, PMP training. So, can you tell me more about that uh, training, how I can attend that training? Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, you got to get in touch with those two individuals I told you. So, can you connect with me on LinkedIn? Let me let me send you my um, LinkedIn. Are you still in a uh, Zoom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you send me your email address in Zoom, and then I'm going to connect yeah. with you on. Are you on LinkedIn? Yeah, yeah. Okay. One okay. Yeah, I you. Okay. S send me your um your LinkedIn email, and then I'll connect with you in LinkedIn. But these two um individuals, um I'm not sure whether they do stuff in New Delhi, but you got to reach out to them and find out. But when we connect on LinkedIn, I'll be able to point you in the right direction. Cause yeah, life. You can search me on LinkedIn. Uh, can you share your uh, ID of LinkedIn? Do you, so, do you go by Anil Kumar Chaudhary? Is will I find you under that name on LinkedIn? Uh, pardon, what you were asking? So, so just can you type into? Oh, are you still in Zoom or have you left? I am, I am in Zoom. I am also in Zoom. Okay. So w which name should I look for you on in LinkedIn? Would it be your name? Anil Kumar Chaudhary. Okay, good. I'll look for you now. Let me make sure. Ah, tell, me, tell, me your, tell me your name. I will search you. Yeah, so mine is a little bit tricky because are you okay. National Manager Strategic Alliances? Okay. Is that you? National Manager Strategic Alliances? Manager, yeah, Manager in Rickson Global. Okay. And in, it said Mumbai. Is that you? No, no not Mumbai. Uh, it was. It, uh, no, this is not this is not you because I don't see Ericsson here. So this is not you. Project, project management, project management at Ericsson Global. Let me see. 
Um, oh, I see. I see you now. Lucknow? Is it called Lucknow or Lucknow? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so let me connect with you. Lucknow is my native place. Lucknow is my native place. Uh, okay, so you're going to get an invite from me, and then I'll connect you to Ari to start with and see if he can help you out. All right. So, so, uh, miss one minute. Do you, do you see it? Have you sent me any request on LinkedIn? Yeah, I sent you a request on LinkedIn just now. Right this moment. So, uh, connect with me. And then um, Ari is connected to me. I'll I'll send you to him, and he'll he'll help you out. Take it from there. Okay. You know, I didn't uh, get any uh, request from your side on anything. Yeah, I did send the request. You you are manager at Ericsson, so you should have gotten that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Because it's not even showing, um, it's not showing you to me anymore because I've sent you the request. Oh, here you are again. So it says, oh, message, message. Oh, okay. It says you're outside my network. Do you know what? You might have to go into connections and approve it. It says pending. Yeah, so you're going to have to go to your email and just um, approve the connection. You should have gotten an email. All right. I don't want to keep everyone waiting. So I'm going to have to jump off here. I've got some stakeholders waiting for me. So thank you for chatting in. And yeah, let, let's connect. Anil, let's connect outside of here because I need to stop the meeting right now because I've got people waiting for me in the office. So I cannot uh, delay them any further. So let's take this to LinkedIn and we'll take it there, okay? All right. Thank you very much and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. All right. And for everyone else who has chatted in or discussed in some way today, I appreciate it. But don't forget the uh, links that I had sent you earlier. I had pointed you to links to look up Chris's YouTube channel. So I'm going to give you one more reminder. If you go to YouTube, so let me just go to the screen. If you go to YouTube and just type in Chris Daniel PMP, and that's Chris's channel, and there's videos there that you'll find useful, inspiring, inspirational videos. Okay? So go check those out. Get inspired, okay? And then um, also search for Ginger Levin PGMP and you'll be able to see uh, Ginger as well. And um, those are the PMP and PMI gurus, both PMPs, uh, Ginger was a PGMP, um, also very heavily involved in PFMP and really a great mentor, great friend, and great coach. And she had she had a blueprint. She, she's given me the blueprint of what I need to do with my life. I just need to make that happen. All right. So thank you all very much for joining me today. Um, I appreciate. Oh, Paul. Paul is the last person who I have not heard. Paul, are you there? Paul? Yes. Paul. Paul seems to be in a meeting. Okay. I'm going to spare him. I'm going to say thank you to everyone. I look forward to seeing you, speaking to you. Anil, connect with me on LinkedIn. Let's continue outside of here. All right. Thank you all very much and talk to you soon. Bye for now.